So when you learn about T, you like to learn about the, the, the different steps that goes into processing T. So when it comes to poor T, there will be four steps. You will have the withering, then the cooking, then the rolling, and then the sun drying. And often we, we could think that each of the steps are independent and then you, you can just um, adjust uh, the variables on one step without affecting the others. And this can be true if you take an industrial approach and try to make each um, step have um, a very uh, a single effect on the tea. But the problem is, uh, in, and that, that's what they try to do in the food industry. They like when one process has only one effect on the product. But in the case of tea making, each of the steps are interlinked. For example, you can see that this, these leaves have withered for a long time. I let them wither for over 18 hours and I did that on purpose. I did that so that uh, they will be slightly reddened and I will be making uh, reddened poor tea. And so they smell different. So what does weathering do on the leaves? Well, first, of course, it, uh, it, lets the, it allows the leaves to oxidize, so they get reddened, but it also, so that's the effect I, I want when doing the, the long weathering, but it has a secondary effect. There will be more water evaporation, so the water content will be lower in these leaves. And especially, it's also quite unequal, because you can see that this leaf, for example, is almost uh, dried, because maybe it was damaged, so that the, there are holes and the water can escape. And so um, that will impact the next step of the processing. So I will have to adjust my variables. So I will have to adjust the next step of the processing. And so the next step is the cooking. So let's see what I should do. Think about it. Um, what's the goal of this next step? And uh, what has the, the first step achieved? Let me put my gloves on and we'll get started. So we have a lower water content in our leaves due to an excess of withering. And one of the, the goals that the, the cooking achieves is also uh, to evaporate water. So by doing the shatsing, we're going to lower the water content even more. So how can I adjust? Maybe we, we would need to give a, a weaker shatsing actually to evaporate less water. Let's try it. So, I will try to keep a moderate temperature during uh, this uh, shatching session. Uh, you can see that there's not a lot of wood burning and it's okay if the, the tea takes a long time to cook. Because you know, when we make standard poor tea, we like to have um, a strong fire at the start so that the leaves shrink quickly. So as to avoid early oxidation, we want our leaves to stay green. But in this case, we are making red and poor tea. So it's not really a problem if uh, the leaves mm, start on a, uh, on a not so hot wok and cook slowly. They will get red because of the long weathering time and the slow cooking time. And that's what we want to achieve. And that way we will prevent a bit of burning. What I noticed in my earlier, earlier batches of red and poor tea is that half of the leaves were dry because I didn't cover them during withering. So since it was a long withering and very dry weather, the leaves at the surface would get dry, almost like white tea. And they would be almost dry when I, when I threw them in the wok. And so they would instantly uh, get roasted in the wok. That would lead to the roasted taste. I like this taste. But in a way, I'd like to have control over it to some extent. Um, so if I need to add the, the roasted taste, it'd be better if I can um, avoid it in the, in the shatching step and maybe add a roasting step a bit later uh, after the tea has been dried. Now again, I, I'm just trying to reflect on some theory and it's not really necessary to have this theory to, to be a technician, to be a factory worker. But if you want to design your own teas, you need to understand the dynamics, the relationship between uh, each, um, each step of the process. 
So same, the goal of shaching, so the goal of weathering, it has two things, okay? Reddening the tea and um, lowering the, the water content. Now this step, the shaching, has three goals. Deactivating the enzymes, lowering the water content, and degrading the cells. Then the rolling process has, uh, you could say, two goals. But the main one is to keep, to degrade the cells. And the second one, to some extent, is to shape the leaves. And finally, the, sun, the purpose of sun drying is uh, to uh, remove all the, the excess water content in the leaves. Okay? So, what does this, this step share in common with the rolling? It's the cell degradation. Both processes aim at the same goal. This one will degrade the cells through, um, through heat, while the rolling will degrade the cells with the mechanical wor uh, work. And I was at uh, a neighbor's house uh, three days ago, and he was operating the shatching machine. Uh, that type, that gas power shatching machine, which can reach a very high temperature. And I was, uh, I was surprised because he used a, a very short time for the shatching. He, he would cook the leaves in uh, six minutes, five to six minutes at uh, 350 degrees Celsius, uh, which is very hot. But you can, you can afford to, to cook at such a high temperature with the machine because the cylinder can rotate faster than you'd be able to shuffle the tea. So even at 350 degrees Celsius, the leaves are not burning. And he said that through that process, he achieves uh, very green leaves, huh? so when they, when they are out of the shatching machine, uh, the leaves still looked uh, a bit intact, you, you know, like almost like after six minutes of cooking, but apparently since inside the inside temperature was so high, apparently it, it somehow, um, it, it's enough to deactivate the enzymes. But then it means that we have achieved the enzyme deactivation, but we, we haven't achieved uh, the cell degradation's goal, and so it means you're going to need to uh, push the, the rolling time. You, you need to extend the rolling time, and so, uh, for example, in our factory, when we cook, um, wh when we cook in the wok, after that, the, the rolling time is uh, very short, three minutes, something like this. And I don't like to use a lot of pressure, especially in the powerful leaves like gusu. But in his case, he had to use a lot of pressure and a long time because he needed to, um, to do that uh, mechanical work, to provide the mechanical work to degrade the cells. And, and, and that got me, that reminded me of that interconnection of uh, the different steps of the processing. So you can see at least, yeah, withering, uh, cooking and rolling are uh, related. And even actually the, the sun drying, um, the sun drying uh, speed will depend on the cell degradation. For example, if you, if you put a batch of, uh, of poor tea, let's say you, you've got some white tea, some uh, black tea and some poor tea and you all put them on a drying mat, which, which, of those, which one of those will be dry first? Think about it think in terms of cells degradation, because when the cells are degraded, the water is uh, more easily available, it's more easily extracted and evaporated from the leaves. So yes, that will be the, the black tea, which will dry first, because it's gone through one hour of rolling, and so the leaves are uh, quite well degraded. Second will be the poor tea, because it will have had that degradation through cooking and rolling, and last, the, the slowest one to, to dry will be the white tea, because its cells will be still fairly intact. And you will see that uh, the drying of white tea is very unequal, because some leaves get some damage, and once they are damaged, there's a, uh, there's a room for water to evaporate out of the leaves. So some, some leaves will dry quickly, and some will need uh, a couple of days. Always, I guess, relying on some kind of cell degradation before the water can evaporate. Okay, so you see now I'm on a very slow, uh, 
uh, my wok is not very warm. Maybe I'm going to push the fire just a little. Yeah. Because now I'm not so used to, to making tea by day. So when you're looking at the fire, it looks like that there's not that many embers, but they are, it's just they aren't glowing as much. I want to get just a, a small flame inside and keep cooking. But again, this time <laughs> it's a very low, low pressure, low stress searching because um, I don't really mind if it takes some extra time. I want this poor tea to be reddened. And I will check on this first batch because Maybe that the withering time is just not enough for, um, I will see. I still want this tea to taste like an unusual poor tea. So it's interesting because uh, some people don't like uh, these uh, differences and they, they feel like it's about cheating or like oolong poo or these kind of things. Mm. Some people uh, criticize when poor tea is processed too green or too oxidized like this. Uh, but it's, it's part of the, the possibilities really. Um, but then again, yeah, you have to mention that it's not really standard poor tea. It's true that maybe some people would, would do such a processing to, to, to make the tea pass as more aged than it is. But even then it's not really credible because there's a difference between between aging and that kind of oxidation. That kind of oxidation is more akin to a black tea or, or even some white tea. You, you get some white tea vibes. Kind of a white tea fragrance with a poor tea body when it's done well. And on top of that, I would like to add a light roast to, to make the experience a bit different. But you see, in the, in the world of poor tea, we've seen a, an expansion of the processing techniques available. Uh, this morning I was talking with a guy who, who is a professional uh, tea worker, so he gets hired by the factories to cook the tea by hand. And he told me he can cook, uh, he can cook a poor tea in five different styles, just with the, um, by varying the, the shatsing uh, parameters. So I was very curious because I would only think of like maybe three styles in which you could cook the, the tea. Um, so I started drinking tea and talking with him for a long time and maybe next year when I have the opportunity I will invite him and maybe he could cook for you uh, the, the same uh, tea in five different styles. That would be a fun thing to do. So you need to really understand processing and this is really important if you're a, a tea factory manager. Mm, you really need to, to go beyond the step-by-step -step process and think in terms of what's going on in the leaf. What's the, um, what is the, the state, uh, the water content of the leaf, and then the, the cell, um, the structural integrity of the leaves you could think what is the oxidation state of the leaf? Are the enzymes deactivated or not? On top of that, you could add some, some roasting, the Maillard reactions, and you could add some uh, fermentation to really get the complete picture. Uh, but for most of the teas, you, you don't need to think about the, the roasting and the fermentation, just uh, mainly the three parameters, oxidation, water, and cell degradations. They cover most of the teas. And so you need to make decisions so as to manage these things, okay? So, well, it's just like uh, when you're learning about tea brewing, you, you learn that you need to a certain t water temperature and a certain time. And then you kind of uh, find other ways like looking at the leaves, looking at how they open. And then this is actually the source uh, that the, the time and temperature are derived from. So it's better to understand the, the source uh, of the question. So try to, to think uh, of the processing in terms of uh, achieving these goals. The water, the oxidation, 
and the cell degradation. So for example, and, and also like about the result, like what, what amount of uh, cell degradation do you want? Because you could have, I think cell degradation makes a sweeter tea. It's just like when cooking vegetables, you know, you get a, a sweeter taste. Uh, think of onions or cabbage things. It, it just uh, degrades the structure and uh, it becomes a kind of puree, you know. Mm, or do you want some bite and some more maybe intact cells with maybe less sweetness, but you'll have uh, other interesting characteristics? Do you want some of that Qing Wei? So we do the Sha Qing is to kill the Qing Wei. So Qing Wei is the, the taste of the smell of the of fresh vegetables. But maybe, mm, I don't know, maybe if you make a, a green tea, you, you want to keep some of that Qing Wei uh, or some uh, or some white teas can have uh, this uh, Qing Wei. So before answering the question, what's, what's a good way to process tea, you need to think about what, what's a good tea. And this is very subjective, so you could think of what, what does your customer want, uh, whether it's wholesale or retail, what do you personally would like to make and then uh, design a process in order to achieve that goal. So that's a very technical approach. Actually, like two weeks ago, I was in a very wabi-sabi mindset and thought, you know what, uh, let nature uh, do, it, it do its deed and you just like let the smoke come in and then um, things happen. Like for example, on my first batch, so a third of the leaves were already dry. I put them in the wok, it gave that roast. So this is something that you, you, you don't control, but that is beautiful in some way because uh, the tea making is part, uh, is a contribution. It's an association of the tea maker and, and nature, chaos, you know, randomness. So you can see it that way. Um, especially when you've got the luxury of making small batches and you don't have a requirement for standardization. Um, in the cheap tea world, they, they don't innovate a lot in the tea processing stuff because they all produce large batches. So they need to have consistency, you see? And so you cannot really have a, that kind of natural approach to big batches. And don't think that uh, making cheap tea is easy. I think in a way it's actually harder than making this kind of tea because you know if I mess up one batch at least I can say oh it was just an experiment uh, let's try to see okay it's a bit like the natural wine world once you once you get rid of the conventions then uh, in a way it gets easier because you have no rules to abide by but in the big industry like for making tea bags or uh, cheaper black teas they really need to, to have that consistency because if they don't get it, uh, they cannot uh, talk their way into, <laughs> into selling the, the product. Uh, you know, these big companies, they, they don't care about the story and so um, they really want uh, that regularity. And the, the casual uh, tea drinker might not drink good tea, but he wants a consistent tea. Uh, that's something I was told by, by some... Uh, tea tasters in Hamburg, it doesn't matter how bad the tea is, it has to be consistent. So in a way if you want really consistent tea, maybe maybe being based on, on um, objective parameters rather than your sense of touch, uh, smell, look, sound um, is better. If you, if you use standard parameters, it can work better as long as you consider all of the parameters. And so that might uh, require a few tools that we don't have here. For example, maybe you'd, you'd need to be able to, um, to measure the water content in the leaf to adapt. Well, once you've figured out all the things, all the, the parameters that, that make your tea, then uh, you can do it consistently. And in the industry, you, you can also uh, 
Well, you can be creative in some way. For example, if you want to deactivate the enzymes without degrading the cells, you could think uh, about um, maybe a high, very high temperature for a very short time that might achieve the goal. You know, that's how they, that's how they, um, they uh, sterilize the milk nowadays. Uh, you could boil it for a couple of minutes, but that would destroy a lot of vitamins. So what they do instead is they put it under very high pressure and, and just um, uh, heat it up to hundreds of degrees. I think it's 800 degrees, if I uh, re remember well, for like a, a few microseconds, you know, or a few milliseconds, then cool it down. And that way you destroy all the bacteria in the milk without destroying Mm, the vitamin C. Well, it's a bit also like, like using different uh, temperatures to brew the tea. If you use lower temperatures, you will extract more of the umami taste and less of the bitterness. If you use uh, higher temperatures, you'll get more of the mouthfeel. But anyway, it seems I am uh, rambling again. So we can see that this batch is cooking well, but yeah, it's, it smells different from a standard batch of poor tea. But I feel, I feel that it's still not enough to make it a unique tea. But if you think it, it's kind of like a oolong, right? It's half oxidized. And what do we do to oolongs? We roll them in a way. So you know there's something, yeah, there's something I've tried yesterday. It's like rolling the tea like this inside the wok. So that's more of a green tea technique. But I think in our case, we want to try to, to get that tea to dry, you know? This kind of tea, red and poor tea, I think doesn't age really well. I uh, had a, I did some experimental batches, I think, back in 2018, and they are not so good nowadays. I'd need to try it again, but I think I tried one last year, and it was, wasn't really satisfying. It lacked a bit of uh, complexity. So it's more of a, a drink it now tea, and there's nothing wrong about this. You know, sometimes uh, people say, oh, but th that way the tea won't age well, but uh, do we want all the tea to age? Uh, I don't think so. Most of the teas are not made, meant to be aged. So as long as you're clear about this. And so if I do that rolling like this, I hope it will extract more of the aroma, you see, because now I'm degrading the cells while they are hot and I'm extracting some of the juices in the batch. Let me just maybe change the camera angle so that you can see better. Yes, yeah, so you can see. Now we're quite on a cold walk and it's been going for a long time already, but I'm not in a hurry with this batch. It's the end of the season. I only have uh, two more batches to cook. Now I'm just in a research mindset and I, I just need to, to figure out a few things. So that's the new technique I, I've been trying yesterday, since yesterday. That kind of rolling, you know, and I want to roll it quite tight. I don't know why, but I feel like I need to extract the juice out of these leaves and it's okay if I uh, if I cook them a, a bit dry in the wok so this is really <laughs> a bastard tea you know because if it's really dried in the wok you cannot call it poor tea anymore but it's way more oxidized than a green tea and it's still quite uh, far from a, an oolong tea in terms of processing. <laughs> so I could, I call it, yeah, I'll call it red and poor tea, but this is good material I'm using. Huh? So let's just hope for the best. Huh? 
this is good kusu material and um, I will just uh, keep cooking this until it dries. Hmm, smells pretty good, huh? But it doesn't smell as oxidized as the batches that I had cooked in the past days. So. So I will just uh, end the video here. I will just keep cooking the tea for maybe five minutes more and we'll see what the result is, okay? So thank you, see you later, bye bye.